Hey, what's up, Droners? Vernon Edwards here from Droner Tech, brought to you by Remote Pilot 101. And today, what we're going to talk about is the Lance or the LAANC, which is a mouthful, or the Low Altitude Authorization Notification Capability, and how to get that. In layman's terms, how do I know I'm flying legally if I'm flying anywhere near an airport, and how can I make that be okay? It's a collaboration between the FAA and industry to be able to support UAS pilots as well as air traffic controllers and pilots in being able to fly in control airspace when they need to. So this program actually was rolled out in 2018 and it would have taken you months or weeks to be able to get uh, controlled airspace authorizations before then. It was a very difficult process. I actually used to just call the air traffic control pilot, like the towers, but hey, so I'm like a mile and a half away from your incredibly small airport and I'm gonna be at like 150 feet, is that okay? And they'd always be like, yeah, I don't care. You don't have to call me for that. And I'm like, okay, they just told me to do it. And they're like, yeah, I know, all right, bye. And so for, this really became the program that allows pilots or you know drone pilots to be able to let alert them and let them know what's going on without having to bother them. It's an automated system that allows you to get that, that works with multiple uh, apps. And what I'm gonna show you guys is the app that I use today, which is my easiest one, is the AirMap app. I've also used the Kitty Hawk app to, use it, to do it before. And there's a list on the FAA's website, there's a link below that can give you all that information. But I'm gonna show you guys today how I use AirMaps to be able to get my air, uh, air authorizations or air, airspace authorizations when I'm flying anywhere near controlled or within air, controlled airspace. This is also actually really important for hobbyists because as you know, the rule of hobbyists is that you cannot fly within five miles of an airport, but if you ever did want to, then you actually could apply for the, this authorization through the same app in a very similar process, which I can explain as well. But if you are a recreational flyer and you want to be able to fly somewhere within five miles of an airport, this is the way to do it. One stipulation is that this actually does not apply to any waivers. Waivers are completely different. What waivers give you is authorization to do things you normally can't. So you can have a nighttime waiver, a flying over people waiver, you can have a, fly, a waiver to fly beyond a visual line of sight. So the waivers are different than authorization. The authorizations are temporary things that are normally very short times, like a single day of flying or something along those lines, or a few hours of saying, I'm gonna fly on this day from this time at this specific location from here to here. Waivers are different where they last much longer. You can get a waiver to say, I can fly in the Class B airspace at Long Beach Airport, and you don't need to necessarily get this authorization, but those waivers are for long-term things. These are for short-term, and they're also almost immediate to get you the results. And you can just apply for them, you get them, and you can handle the flight, and you can be legal, which is super important. This just gives you authorizations. You still need to check the NOTAMs, which is notice to all the airmen, uh, weather conditions, and abide by all airspace restrictions. Of course, I had to say that, right? And the Lance program is available at approximately 400 air traffic facilities across 600 airports across the United States. And if you want to be able to fly in some of the other airspaces that are not a part of this program, then you still have to go through the old school manual process to apply for an authorization, which can be found on the FAA's website and on some of the apps that you can use. Last disclaimer is that this is an app that works in the United States, and I'm only speaking to flying within the United States. <sighs> All right, now that we got all that out of the way, now I'm just gonna show you guys how to do this on the Air Maps app, because I love Air Maps. It is the, one of the most useful apps for a drone pilot. If you don't have it, you should get it. It's free. Make sure when you do download the Air Maps app, the first thing you need to do is register for it. Put in all your information, put in all your drone's information, because it makes this process so much easier. And what I'm about to show you, I've already done all of these things. So all of my information, all my registration is already in there, and this is how quickly you can get your airspace authorization through Air Maps whenever you do it just like this. So when you first open the app, what it shows you is your physical location of where you are. It's gonna give you the airspace around you, and you want to make sure that you have all of the settings set to whatever type of flying you're gonna do. And so for me, first thing I did was zoom in so I could see a space that I wanted to fly. Now those numbers with those lines over top of them are showing you the ceilings of where you can fly. And so what you wanna do is look for the spots you're gonna go and where you wanna fly. I found a cool little neighborhood that's on the mountainside that I think is gonna look great for this particular example. And you hold your finger down and it gives you a little circle that shows the radius of where you're gonna be flying. You can adjust that with the radius adjuster that just pops up right there. And then after that, you can say, okay, now I want to look at the different rules. So you click on the bottom of the screen and it shows you all the rules that you have that you have selected. I have part 107, because I am a part 107 pilot. I have the air map rules and I have the required rules as well. And then you can go in there and look at the advisories to see what advisories are for this particular area. After you go with that, you hit the top right corner to go to next. 
And from here, what you're doing is you're gonna adjust the altitude of what you're gonna fly. Make sure it's below the altitude that it, the line told you where you are flying anyway. And under the advisories, it tells you where you're gonna wanna go. The next up, you pick the date and time of when you're going to be flying, which is very important because you wanna make sure you're putting that right because it'll t deny you if you try to fly at night or anything like that. Underneath that, it has all the information of who you are, where you are, and it gives you a little section where you can put notes in and say, oh, I plan to stand at 200 feet. And then it gives you pretty much a bunch of visual line of sight and a bunch of things that you should know if you have your part 107. If not, read through it, answer the questions honestly. It's super easy. After that, it gives you a flight briefing that gives you all the information you need to know about what the wind is, the weather, the temperature. It gives you the rules that you need more information on. And it says you might have to have controlled, you have to have authorization to fly in that airspace. You hit, you hit submit, it tells you, you have successfully submitted it, and then you just kind of wait and see like, hmm, how long is it gonna take for me to get, and oh my goodness, it's a text right there. It, make, it sends you a text almost immediately, for me it was in like 12 seconds, and it gives you your FAA airspace authorization with a confirmation number that you can use to say, hey, this is I'm legally flying here within this controlled airspace if anybody was to ever question you, and then you're set to go. Go ahead and fly and have a good time. All right, drone thank you guys so much for checking it out. Um, to wrap this up, that is just one of the apps that you can use to be able to get your air space authorization. That's a very easy process. That's the app that I use, that I like. I've also used Kitty Hawk. There's a lot of other functionalities to the air maps, which is pretty much any time a client ever says, I want to fly somewhere, the first thing I always do is open up air map, put in the address, and then look at what the advisories are and what airspace is before I tell them that the job can happen or not so that you can know that. So before apps like AirMap, it used to be extremely difficult to know if you were flying in a legal space or not because you'd actually have to open up your the, the airspace maps, like the physical maps that you can find online that are, that are still just physical, like stagnant maps and have to know how to learn how to read them, which you do from a commercial pilot's exam. You learn how to do that. But let me tell you, it's not that much fun. Way easier to literally just press a button on a map and it tells you everything you need to know. That's just technology, just thank you. So Air Maps is great, I highly recommend it. Hey Droners, thank you guys so much for checking out this information dense but really important episode. If you guys wanna have more, we got more. And if you wanna see the new ones that come out, guess what? All you gotta do is subscribe and turn on your notifications. We'll be back with more. This has been Droner Tech brought to you by Remote Pilot 101. And as always, make sure you stay fly.